my father was a tank commander in the second armored division and was killed in Germany at the Elbe River right at the close of the war. I mean, it was in April 14th, 1945, the war was basically over. When I started growing up, uh, you know, from 1945 until my mother remarried in 1950, basically uh, I was surrounded by veterans from World War II in my town who went to high school with my father. Uh, and they were all belonged to the American Legion. Uh, they looked after me like I was an orphan. Uh, I wasn't really an orphan because we had a very tight knit family when I was growing up, but they treated me like uh, a special kid. Uh, and that, that prevailed until I left Appleton after high school. Uh, I, was, I was always treated somehow special by the people that knew my father growing up. People looking after me who I didn't really know that well, but knew my father. Uh, and it pervaded everything. I mean, for example, uh, the Elks Club, the, uh, whenever there was an award to give out, uh, you know, I was always on the list, whether I deserved it or not. <laughs> and in the end, in high school, uh, I got a uh, commission to go to West Point, which was a pretty rare thing. I mean, you have to have your assemblymen and congressmen all endorse you and so forth. But by then, my attitude, the Vietnam War had, was ongoing already, and my attitude about the military and war, and I recognizing the impact on my own family, uh, uh, my whole attitude about the military changed. My father was buried in Holland, and Margraten Cemetery in Holland, you know, maybe a, a couple hundred miles from where he was killed. Um, so... In the, by the time I was in college, I was in university in Austria, I ended up being the first one in my family to visit his grave in Markgraten, Holland, which was a really an incredible experience for me. And my father stayed with a Dutch family when, during the war when they were passing through uh, Southern Holland. And uh, I met the family we had a relationship to this very day with the third generation of that family. A lot of people trying to stay out of the army or stay out of, not so much stay out of the army, stay out of Vietnam. Nobody, you know, it's like a death trap. It was well known. Uh, there were protests, there was everything going on. Um, and uh, I tried to avoid it too, but I was also, going to graduate school. And uh, it, unfortunately in 1968, they changed, used to get a graduate school deferment. Uh, but in 1968, the year I went to graduate school, they eliminated that. And I got caught up in the, uh, the draft process in my hometown of Appleton, Wisconsin. I got what was called an unlucky number, <laughs> which was a high number in the draft. During my stay in the military, I experienced personally, I mean, there's a big to do now about suicides in the military and how awful it is and how many there are. While I was in the military, two year period, I personally saw four suicides. Uh, I mean, up close and personal. Uh, the first one happened on the first day I was in the army at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, uh, in the barracks after we got off the bus. Uh, a young man tried to kill himself. He did kill himself. He didn't make it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was, I was 20, 21, 22 years old. I was one of the oldest guys in this, in this barracks of 100, 100 guys. And me and another guy were the only two college graduates. The rest of them were 18, 19 years old. Uh, some of them, a couple of them had gotten married the 
day before they went into the army, they were kids. I mean, I was a kid. <laughs> it was in the middle of winter uh, and there was a spinal meningitis outbreak in the, at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is very contagious and very deadly. And uh, I came down with it. Uh, <laughs> so I ended up being in the hospital for about, you know, two or three or four weeks. Luckily, I didn't die. I was, I was worried about it. I thought, hey, I'm not, in, not even in Vietnam yet, and uh, I might be dead. And this is, the barracks were World War II barracks. It was just wooden frame. There's no insulation, coal burning stove, one coal burning stove on each floor and two wool blankets at each bunk. That was it. It was freezing cold in these barracks. And it was a bad winter in Kentucky. I ended up meeting a, the other college graduate that was on the bus with me. I ended up sitting next to him. And he advised me to, when you fill out the form for what you want to do in the army, to put down chaplain's assistant. And I did, and he did. And that decision, kept me out of Vietnam. I don't think the nature of war has changed. I think mil the military changes. Would I ever advise anybody going into the military? No. Do we need the military? Probably yes. Now, how you reconcile that, I don't know. I'm Ron Bixby, live in Hillsdale, New York, and I'm the owner of Little Apple Cidery.